Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And on today's Going In Raw News Brief, NXT announces new signings, we review last night's Impact, and we preview tonight's AEW and NXT. But first, just how many fans are going to be at WrestleMania 37? Larson, what's in the news? What's in the news? So we're going to talk WrestleMania 37, Steve. So included in the press release that WrestleMania 37 will be taking place at Tampa's Raymond James Stadium was a note kind of in like one of the last paragraphs uh, about ticket sales oh. and, and, and referencing they'll be sold for the event. So Stephanie McMahon spoke with TMZ Sports about having fans in attendance uh, at the grandest stage of the mall. And this is what she said. These transcripts are from Wrestling Inc. Quote, I'm thrilled and excited because hopefully this will be the first opportunity for us to have our fans back in attendance. You know, that's the current plan. Of course, ticket information is not available yet because we're still trying to figure out all the different machinations. We're really lucky, though, because the NFL Super Bowl is our lead in this year from Raymond James Stadium. So we're going to learn a lot from them logistically and uh, really best practices, what works, what doesn't work. But man, we can't wait to come in and for two nights, hopefully really rock that pirate ship. There's a lot of different logistics that need to be determined, but hopefully it'll all work out. And this will be the first WWE event where we actually bring the WWE universe back together in person. And I cannot wait. So while she addresses the possibility of fans in attendance, uh, she doesn't answer another question. How many fans will be there? However, uh, Russell votes today tweeted out, quote, WWE is planning on permitting upwards of 25,000 fans to WrestleMania on each night. The real internal discussions are what to do after. Some would like a soft reopening of the touring schedule for live TV as continuing the Thunderdome past mania comes with location headaches. Mm, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I believe Tampa Bay Rays, they play a Tropicana field. Baseball season uh, is going to start some point early April. Mm -hmm. um, of course, basketball in Orlando at the Amway Center, the Magic will still be playing. So those two possibilities out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a quick side note here for people listening to us. The additional commentary is from your uh, the team working on your gutters right now, just yes. in case anybody's so you, curious. So you can hear it. Okay, yes. It's, uh, I, they're working on the ones on this side of the house. Uh, it's been a, 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 you know, it's been a bit of a cacophony at times today, but it's it, it's work that needed to happen. So it's, it's a welcome. It's, it's very background. It's very background. Like yeah. I'm not. I'm just saying that because I know people are gonna be like, "Well, you got issues now." Um, like, is, there, is there an earthquake? Yeah, in the Sacramento area. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, look, dude. The Super. I mean, is the Super Bowl? Are they expected to have like twenty five thousand? Is that? Is that? I don't know. I we don't, don't know. know. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's you know, from a public relations standpoint, they're tying themselves smartly. They're tying themselves to the Super Bowl, saying, "Hey, by the way, they're doing it." So, uh, you know, it's not abnormal for us to be doing this right here um so uh so yeah i mean uh, this is this is to be expected i mean yeah the, yeah. the real question is going to be what happens after wrestlemania going forward uh you know they they've got i mean i, I would assume that nxt is going to remain at the capital wrestling center for now i would think so yeah but that does leave open you know five hours of, of tv you got raw and smackdown um on a weekly basis mm -hmm. so i man i don't know i don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna i do mean that, i don't that know questions. i don't know either because are they going to try to do, do like a modest touring schedule where they, you know, they could even still remain predominantly, assuming there's venues available mm -hmm. in the state of Florida. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where else apart from because Tampa does have an arena, but then you got hockey and and uh, 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 the, the Raptors are playing in, in Tampa, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, you know, since they can't travel back and forth from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know where else. Like, of course, Miami, they, they have the heat. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they can work it out logistically where there's a venue available to them Mondays and Fridays at various Florida locations, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't so know. So that's going to be interesting to uh, keep in mind. Um, so, yeah, let's see. It looks like also, in other news, PW Insider is reporting that uh, the current plan for each night of WrestleMania is to be a three-hour broadcast each night running from 7 to 10 Pacific Eastern. <laughs> I know I love the three-hour show, man. I love it. Uh, that is obviously subject to change, as is everything about the world currently, and that plan doesn't likely that plan likely doesn't factor in 
whatever kickoff show would air before the actual pay-per-view broadcast. So that's fine. We'll go live half an hour before the actual show starts, as usual, for our reactions. Well, they usually have more, they usually have more kickoff matches for Mania than they did, well, historically speaking. Yeah, because usually, the kick, isn't the kickoff for Mania usually like two hours when they two have like... Two or three hours long, yeah. yeah we were like, there as two hours, I thought. Yeah, so... And there was uh, three matches? God, was there really three? Oh, my gosh. Well, there was, there was Dean and Baron. There was the Andre Battle Royal. Those eight-hour shows were on, and then terrible. and then uh, uh, Pac and Austin Aries were all on the kickoff show, I believe, at Mania Thirty Three. Unbearable. I mean, I guess one of the real questions is going to be, you know, if they they did the two nights last year, they did two nights, they're doing two nights this year. I wonder if they'll just they're just going to stick to two nights going forward. I love the, the well, two nights. The 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 twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three Manias were only announced for one day. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. So it looks like they're probably getting back to that, huh? Huge six hour shows again. <laughs> With a two-hour, three-hour kickoff show. Yeah. Eight hours of wrestling. Hooray! Yeah. Speaking of hooray, NXT announced some new signings. Uh, they are Priscilla Kelly, mm-hmm. uh, Lacey Ryan, mm-hmm. Elena Black. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have all signed with NXT and all will be taking part, I believe all three of them, in the Dusty Cup, Women's Dusty Cup this year. Um, and the brackets for that were released on the bump earlier today. Uh, yeah, Priscilla and well, they're not going by their previous uh, wrestling names, I guess. So Marina Shafir. Okay, so Gigi Dolan is Pr- is Priscilla yes. Kelly. Yeah, and Cora Jade. That is um, uh, I know Zoe Stark is Lacey Ryan. Okay, so, who, so who Elena, Elena, Elena 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 Black, Black is thank you yeah. is Cora Jade. Okay, so yeah, so Cora Jade is yeah Elena Black and Priscilla Kelly are going to be teaming up. They're going to be taking on Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell in the first round. Uh, Shotzi and Ember Moon are going to be taking on Marina Shafir and Zoe Stark, who is previously Lacey Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the other side of the brackets, we got Mercedes Martinez and Tony Storm taking on Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter. Um, I, dude, I really hope that they have Casey and Caden go over there. I mean, you can have Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. <sighs> I mean, it's unlikely they're going to lose, but yeah. you could you could transition them into like a heel versus heel. You could transition uh, that into a feud, but then you look at the p- potential second round matchup for him. So uh, the final first round matchup here is Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea taking on Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. And the idea of, of a heel versus heel Mercedes and Tony Storm versus Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, that's actually pretty promising. Like, well, okay, they yeah, all match but, up really well, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be in the semis. It's going to be Candice. Obviously, it's going to be Candice LeRae and, and Shotzi Blackheart uh, and Ember yeah. Moon. So, can I mean, it's probably going to be. Yeah, I could do it. I could see the finals being Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus uh, uh, Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Ooh, boy, I don't know. Oregon. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of see Cancel Ray and Indy Hartwell winning this whole damn thing, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's well, I feel like whoever's going to win is going to be out of the, the left side of that bracket. Whoever wins the, the semifinal match between uh, Candace and Indy versus Shot Seat Ember, I kind of feel like they're winning the whole thing. I Here's the thing I think it's going to be this Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez move on in the first round. Yeah. Casey Kettenzero and Caden Carter move on in the first round. Maybe. And then, yeah, and then you got uh, Casey Kenton's their own Caden Carter and Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. That could flip Dakota Kai back to being a face if Raquel Gonzalez turn. If if they come up short, Raquel Gonzalez, I think she's on path to solo wrestler. I think Dakota oh, yeah. Kai oh, is she's probably well on, on path, path to main ro- main roster. Yeah. Uh, so I think that might break th- those two up. And then, like you said, yeah, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus Shotzi Blackheart number one. Whoever wins that is going to win the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling it's going to be Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell because I think it's going to be them versus Case Catanzaro and Katie Carter in the in the in the finals. There we go. But uh, that's just my speculation. That was Steve's thoughts on the Women's Dusty Classic. Let's talk thoughts on Impact last night. It's a pretty fun show. A little more talky than what we're used to for Impact. However, uh, some major developments. Stacked. Uh, yeah, Big James returns. Storm. Yeah. James Storm back at Impact. Matt Hardy. Returned to Impact with Private Party and and uh, Tony Khan during his paid advertisement uh, said that that was you know uh, kind of his way of getting back at Impact mm-hmm. or you know uh, Kenny kind of going over there was to bring Private Party Matt Hardy there uh, and then also himself and Jerry Lynn they showed for the main event the main event was uh, Private Party they got themselves a tag team title number one contender match against uh, Chris Sabin and mm-hmm. since Alex Shelley is missing. James Storm took his place. 
really fun match. Jerry Lynn uh, helped Private Party pick up the win. So Private Parties are now the number one contenders for the Impact Tag Tiles. No announcement when they'll be facing the Good Brothers. Um, I would be kind of curious that if Private Party comes up short here, if uh, if Tony doesn't try to enlist the help of the Young Bucks mm. to be next in line to step up to the to, to the Good Brothers. Maybe, could be. Um, also of note, Taya Valkyrie looks to have been written off of Impact. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think Fightful noted that her contract uh, with Impact uh, was, at the very least, she had signed a two-year deal back in 2019. Mm-hmm. Usually contracts start at the beginning of the year, so it might stand to reason that, and given that she was arrested, she has a mugshot up on Twitter now. Um, a mugshot, it's great. Uh, and so, you know, who knows where she might be headed yeah. to. Uh, I like your idea that uh, that Tony Khan would uh, perhaps, golly, you know, every time I try to click on an Impact Wrestling results, I get like a flurry. I know you guys got to pay your bills, but, you know, when it stops working, when it makes your website stop working. <laughs> like, oh, the idea that, that Tony Khan would, would bail her out. Bail her out, I think it's a great idea. A yeah. yeah, that could be yeah. fun. That could yeah. be fun. He gives her um, a legal it, team. It was, it was a fun segment, too, with her, and, and she got opportunity to say goodbye to Rosemary. It was all really good. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, it was a nice little um, uh, with him. Uh, Kenny, the Good Brothers, Don Callis k- kicked off the show. They're going to go celebrate, and on their way out, D- Don Callis said, hey, I, we're going to be taking a, a, a break, he and Kenny, from Impact for a little bit. Mm. Uh, but be sure to tune in to uh, AEW, which I'm sure there'll be regulars on. More on that later. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else happened? Uh, Eric Young beat Rhino in singles yeah. action. Uh, Moose and Rich Swan. Uh, had an encounter where Moose basically, uh, you know, the first opportunity presented, which was during an interview, completely beat the crap out of Rich Swan, And then later on, they had an encounter in the ring uh, where Rich Swan got the better of Moose. But Yeah, uh, Rich Swan said he, he, he was ready to wrestle Moose for the title right then and there. And Moose says, no, this is on my time. I mm-hmm. do that. James, Sto- I think you mentioned this, James Storm returned mm-hmm. uh, to, yeah, to help Chris Saban take on Lose to Private Party. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we had a match. Kimberly and Susan took on Jordan, Grace, and Jazz. Uh, I don't remember who actually won that one. I feel like Jordan, Grace, and Jazz did. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Susan got the roll up on Jazz. No, oh, okay. Well, for the win, we were not. You know, I don't think we were paying attention at that point. Impact is all moral. Is it's just as much about hanging out as it is about watching wrestling. No, absolutely. That, that's totally what it's about. Uh, I mean, uh, Brian Myers got the surprise win versus Falaba. Yeah, he was uh, getting wrecked uh, most of the match, then uh, kicked Falaba in the front area. I remember that, mm-hmm. and, and clothesline to get the win there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, looks like we got a feud here between uh, Ace Austin and Matt Cardona, mm-hmm. newly. Signed? I don't think he's actually is Matt. Did, they confirmed that he's not actually signed to a deal with him. Back I don't believe so. Be on like some appearances, uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. We had a uh, Tony Khan and Jerry Lynn, like you said, uh, sitting ringside there for that main event, which was both shocking and hilarious because he had a little captain's log Star Trek notes. Oh, notebook so good. He was taking he notes. Was taking notes. Tony Khan's after, a star. After he's Private star. Party one, he was just pointing at the AEW logo on Jerry Lynn's shirt and the saying, "Number one, number one, we're number one, number one." <laughs> That was really terrific stuff. It's fantastic. He's great. Yeah, he Another great. fun show again every Tuesday, at least for the for the foreseeable future. We'll be doing these uh, uh, co streams of Impact Wrestling. Come join us Tuesday nights, five p.m. Pacific, eight p.m. Eastern, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. We had yeah, like eight hundred no, people great. at one point, or eight hundred people last night at one point. It was awesome. And look, I can't speak for like the future, but as long as it's fun for us to do it, regardless exactly. of AEW is there or not, we're going to keep on doing it. It seems exactly. like a lot of people, we had almost 800 people watching with us last night. Uh, if AEW continues to bring these fun shows, if our Tuesdays continue to be available, mm-hmm. then uh, then we're going to keep on doing them. Yep. Not yep. going to commit to it every single Tuesday. Sometimes we might want to take a break, in which case that's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking, speaking of uh, more wrestling uh, on Wednesdays nights now, NXT. And AEW have a show, have shows tonight. NXT uh, is going to feature Tommaso Ciampa battling Timothy Thatcher, probably in the main event for that NXT fight pit uh, match. That should be I would one. expect that to be the case. That should be a good one. Uh, Kushida and Leon Ruff face John. John. John Gargano John. and Austin Theory in a Dusty Rhodes classic match. Ooh, that'll be good. So, we, yeah, and also on Friday, we had two of these Dusty classic matches on 205 where Killian Dane and Drake Maverick moved on ahead uh, in their bracket, and then so did uh, Legato Del Fantasma. Uh, and then uh, let's see here. Casey Cantanzaro and Caden Carter 
They're going to battle Tony Storm, Mercedes Martinez in the women's Dusty Classic. So that'll tell us a lot about what's yes. going to happen on that side of the bracket. And then Lucha House Party set for intriguing Dusty Classic battle versus Imperium. 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 Of course, there's also AEW tonight. Uh, we got this inner circle tag team triple threat bout. Santana and Ortiz taking on Jericho and MJF versus Hager and Guevara. Sammy Hager. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's going to get chippy. I know they think it's supposed to be friendly competition, but it does decide who is the tag team of AEW. Clearly, this has to be LAX, right? Well, X LAX, yeah, they can't. They're not LAX anymore. X Lax. Uh, yes. We're gonna have Negative One's birthday celebration. Yes. Uh, along with uh, Hangman Page and the Dark Order taking on the Hybrid Two and the Chaos Project. Correct. Uh, also, Cody Rhodes versus Peter Avalon. Pretty Peter Avalon. Uh, Matt Hardy and the private party take it on Matt Seidel and top flight. That should be a fun man. That's a trios team right there. That's a good one. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be a fun match. Uh, Layla Hirsch uh, against Penelope Ford. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be Layla Hirsch versus uh, Nyla Rose, I think. Mm -hmm. And then Nyla mm -hmm. Rose had to quarantine. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Mox in singles action. That'll probably be a quick match. We get an update from Miro and his Butler. Charles Taylor. The Kentucky gentleman Charles Taylor. Uh, Sting is going to congratulate Darby Allen. Uh, I'm okay. sure Team so Taz is going to have something thing. to say about that. Yeah, I think so. And then finally, Kenny Omega reflects on his dominance. Oh, wow, some, some genuflecting from Kenny Omega. Nice. Okay, anyways. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be live for our AEW recap tonight at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. And, of course, coming up at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, probably close to the time you're watching this, it's going to be Ask the Intern, going in Raw's first ever actual intern for college credit, Christopher Kaufman, mm -hmm. is going to be live with us answering mm -hmm. your questions over at Friendo Club TV. You can get access to that live or on demand at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson by dropping us a YouTube channel membership or by throwing us a Twitch sub at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. So you can join us for that fun uh, in a little bit here. Thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson.